Greetings programs, welcome back to Arcneo Reviews, where, why not, I'm going to be self-indulgent. We're going to look at another Starscream figure, and uh, this is kind of a weird figure to go over. Um, anyone who hasn't already, you know, read the title, uh, this is the Combiner Wars Leader Class Starscream, which was a semi... Heavy retool of a leader class jet fire, I want to say. Um, <laughs> but my my Transformers lore is uh failing me right now. But yeah, so this is a this is them taking a completely different character, basically just changing the wings and taking away some accessories and calling it a Star Scream. So. He he ends up coming off kind of weird, um, but the jet mode does look pretty decent overall. Uh, yes, it does have all the extra crap on it right now, making it look weird. Um, worth addressing, you've got these two little uh, obvious you know slots for something to tab in. That's for the Jetfire version. Starscream does not use these at all. I don't know why they couldn't have bothered to mold them out and not have them here. But I guess if you have the jet fire, you can take advantage of those. Uh, up here, front missile uh, does actually fire. At least on this copy, this is the single like most hair trigger missile I've ever seen. Um, I've literally walked past this thing on the table. And the table vibrating it caused it to fire. There's a reason I don't like uh, actually loading this thing. Very, very simple looking little gray missile here. Nothing too special. Um, and just to get it out of the way, uh, yeah, there are ports on the side of the blaster here. So you can, you know, combine it with other stuff. Be weird. But uh, I unplugged that to uh, give us a more normal looking jet. More traditional Starscream. Looks a bit better. Uh, he does have rolling landing gear, which is a very nice touch. Uh, they do fold away as well. Rear landing gear are permanently out. They do also roll. And they are kind of concealed in these guns here. But you can uh, obviously pop these off. But these ones are nice because they are meant to just kind of plug in and leave. You can transform him and everything leaving these in here. He does also have... I, I want to say that these ones in particular are supposed to be his null rays. I'm not sure. But also worth addressing really quick. I don't have the crown to this figure. I never had the crown for it. I, I got it secondhand. Crowns are like the worst thing to try to get for a Starscream. Because so many people will buy this, take the crown off, give it to a different figure, and then sell this. So th that's what happened to me. Um, But yeah... Nice, nice little mold, actually. And uh, once again, you've got a port to, you know, Frankenstein, you know, plug more weapons on your weapons. You can plug these in down here and make the landing gear unusable if you want or something. Uh, he's also got these much, much larger, and for some reason this one does not want to actually come off, uh, blasters. Completely hollow on the underside, but... Again, nice sculpting, especially on the outside here. They look pretty good. Um, I don't know if this is supposed to be anything in particular, just an extra weapon. As you can see, this guy does end up coming with a kind of ridiculous amount of weapons. And if you want, you know, you can just Frankenstein all these things one on top of the other and Yeah, just just uh, just imagine I did this twice. <laughs> I'm not gonna bother, but yeah, you know, you could you could almost make a drone out of these, all these things, which is fun. Here we'll get one last look at the uh, the jet mode, completely clean on its own, which now the uh, non retractable rear landing gear really stick out because of everything being gone, but. Still looks pretty good. It, traditional Starscream issues of it's a robot under a jet. But 
And what are you going to do? You're going to look at it from the top is what you're going to do. Who, who displays their jet figures like this? Like, I mean, come on. But anyway, enough uh, rambling on about that. Let's go ahead and get this guy transformed. His transformation is... We'll call it interesting. <laughs> um, we'll start by coming in the front here. Breaking the uh, nose cone free it is on a double hinge. We'll just kind of bring it up and extend it out. Fold the uh, rear stabilizers, I'm assuming, down. Um, right underneath these two jets, or the thrusters, there are uh, pegs coming down and pegging into... I'm pretty sure that's the shoulder. As well as the wings, the tail wings right here are pegging into the legs. So you'll just want to go ahead and get all of this unpegged, which can take a little bit of doing. But eventually you'll get it all free. And there's just the most pathetic little double hinge here. Shift that forward, you know, an inch, I think, total. Go ahead and finish bringing this back. Kind of fold it as flat as it gets, at least for now. Um, come up here. If you push down on this front spot here, it will, at least usually, um, open up these little sections. You see there's little slots here, little tabs sticking out there. Go ahead and bring those down. That will let you... Get this torso section free, which again, it's on a big double hinge. This is like the most double hinge reliant transformation I've ever seen. It's kind of ridiculous in that way. Um, go ahead, uh, start rotating the leg down. Rotate it forward while you're going. Then bring it in the rest of the way. And there's a little, little tab right here that will slot in on the side of that. Little gray spot there. Same thing over here. And worth mentioning, um, it's a pain in the butt getting these legs in just the right orientation for the uh, the jet mode. So you probably will have to mess with them and fight with them a little bit to get them, you know, c correct, quote unquote. Um, as you can see, the, the hands are getting a little in the way there. You can you know bring them forward if they're in the way but go ahead and untab these uh, just kind of struts from each other and there are tabs on the back side of these panels that will come down and you don't actually want to tab them in just yet just kind of bring them down and get them close then we'll go ahead close these panels back up Bring this all the way up, and there are uh, little tabs coming off the back of this piece that will slot in either side here. So make sure those slot in as you come up. And then you're going to get this tab in the back spot here tabbed in, as well as put these little side tabs right here on the side of the torso. So a tiny bit of uh, plastic flex involved in this, but... Nothing nothing that worries me like I've seen on some figures. Um, it's a little hard for me to do this through the viewfinder, so I apologize about that. I'm going to make this look 50 times harder than it actually is to get all this lined up. Uh, also, yeah, for anyone who hasn't caught on at this point uh yeah i'm giving up on doing these separate transformation videos we're just going to transform as part of the main video but go ahead bring his arms into place now that all that's done last thing are the feet and once again big shock the feet are on a double hinge so you'll bring them all the way down and forward And he is from that era of molded at an angle feet, so you will want to bring the hips out one click each. And get him straightened out. And there we have Combiner Wars Leader Starscream.
It was robot mode. And I'm not sure how to feel about this. Like, on the one hand, it's got the colors. It's got mostly the face. You know, um, it's not a bad head sculpt by any means, but this does not feel like Starscream. This doesn't feel like a Seeker in general. And it's it's weird to say that, you know? It's not like... I'm not. I'm looking for words here. As usual, nothing has changed in that I'm still the guy who says the words who's bad at saying the words. But there, when, especially when you own as many Starscreams as I do, there's a certain feel to a Starscream transformation that you expect. And that process of transformation helps kind of, you know, like, in the back of your mind, after you do it enough times, it starts really identifying the character for you. I'm missing my identifiers here. Y you know, the the head is... It's not... The, the head's too rounded, and, you know... it. No, his head's supposed to be a square. His head's not a square. You know, there's no involvement of, you know, even... Pretending like the cockpit came to the chest, usually you get at least, hey, knock him over. <laughs> Normally you get at least, you know, part of this section somewhere around here. Or you at least have something that looks the same, you know, as this going here. None of that. It's... I'm sure it's one of those things that's just because I am so used to Starscreams working a certain way... Like, even my Michael Bay Starscream figures still kind of have that Seeker, you know, traditional transformation. That is that is completely lost here. And it's amazing how much that does affect this figure feeling like a Starscream. To be fair, it's still a good figure. I'm not knocking the figure. Uh, I will knock the really, really bad light piping, though. Can you tell that he has red eyes? Because I can't. We'll, we'll see if we can uh, force the issue here. Y you can kind of see him now. Uh, the head crystal works pretty well once you get light coming from behind him. You know, yeah, to be fair, when I shoot these videos, all the light's coming from, you know, he, from me towards the figure. So, you know, it's all front lit. So, we're expecting some, you know, some front lighting issues on light-piped figures, but this is bad. Like, you know, I'll, I'll give it that it looks like he just straight up has black eyes when you're not getting any light there, but that is not well done light piping. Again, this is just, it's off. It's weird. Still not a bad figure, though. Posability, uh, the head is on two joints, really. So, you know, one joint for the up and down, mostly up. Pretty good range, actually. Rotation. Uh, ratchet, soft ratchet here in the shoulders for that. Would be a full rotation without the wings. Um, just a fairly, fairly tight friction joint for the in and out there. Uh, you want to watch when you're doing that one because it's very easy to untab the uh, the two tabs there in the shoulder. Got a tight rotation there. Pretty sure that's a mushroom peg. Um, here you can see the gear teeth because, yes, the elbows are that kind of ratchet. They go a little bit past 90 degrees. Um, with this torso transformation, yeah, you can already guess. There is no articulation in the hips or anything like that. Um, you do have a rotation right here in the thigh. We'll turn all the way in a tiny bit out, not much. It is a ratchet joint as well. Um, can only go back that far. Forward that far. Different ratchet for the outward. Almost the full splits, but not quite. Uh, ratchet in the knee as well. A little bit past 90 degrees. 
And, uh, you know, you do have the two joints here in the foot, so you can, you know, shift it around a little bit, get it how you want it. Overall, though, I mean, this is a very, very weird figure. It's not bad. It looks a little better when you put the gear on, so we'll go ahead and, you know, gear him up here. Uh, which does remind me, actually, um, the little null race had this little, little nub right here sticking out. There's actually two indentations here in the forearm to help uh, lock that. So once you have it pushed in, like, I can't actually rotate this without bringing it out slightly. So you can lock it in completely straight or at this kind of weird slightly downward angle. Um, not sure. That's probably more for uh, jet mode and I'm just not, you know, turning the arms before I transform him into a jet. But go ahead and, and at least by the official pictures, you're supposed to put those ones on the forearm, which is why I'm assuming they're the null rays. Look forward. And then put the big gray ones back here. Which means they will now be in the way of his arms. Great. So, I, I'm not really sure where to leave off on this guy. Because, you know, on the one hand, it's not, you know, it's not a bad figure by any means. But I think I will go as far as to say it's not a good Starscream figure. You know, you know, this this should have been not Starscream. This could have been any other jet. But this isn't a seeker. You know, there's a there's a feel to seekers, especially when you own as many seekers as I do. This does not feel like a seeker. And, and that's really the only way I know how to explain it. Hopefully that makes sense to at least some of you out there. Again, it's not a bad figure. If you can find it for a good price, especially if he still has the crown, you'll have some fun with them. The transformation is very different. You know, yeah, it's got a very visible alt mode on the underside. But it's pretty clean, actually, any other direction. You know, credit where it's due. It's a fairly clean alt mode, except from specifically straight on underneath. So, I can't, by any stretch, call this thing a bad figure. But it's got bad light piping. And this does not feel like Starscream. That, that's really all it comes down to. It's Starscream colors... But there is no Starscream personality here. And kind of a letdown in that regard. Anyway, as usual, my two cents. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I will see you next time.